This is a 61-year-old male patient for mitral valve replacement via a right mini thoracotomy. The patient had history of severe mitral regurgitation, coronary artery bypass grafting a few years prior, hypertension, end-stage renal disease on hemodialysis, and had a right jugular vein hemodialysis catheter in place. After induction of anesthesia and intubation, a right internal jugular vein was cannulated using ultrasound and cell danger technique. The vein was noted to be large but without respiratory variation in its diameter. Needle cannulation was easy, but wire could only be advanced approximately 10 centimeters into the vein before meeting resistance. It is important to note that if a jugular vein does not change diameter with position or respiration, it's suspicious for a proximal obstruction. This is the surface ultrasound. You can see the wire, the artifact generated by the wire, very large right internal jugular vein in blue, carotid in red. Also some artifact inside of the vein that was not thrombus, just reverberation artifact. You can see almost a mirror image from the uh, surface, the skin and subcutaneous tissue in this patient. So more a uh, mirror image artifact. Uh, red, the right carotid. Again, yellow, the artifact. This vein was uh, compressible but did not change in diameter with breathing. We advanced the catheter into the jugular vein enough just to do a venogram. In the venogram, you can note a dilated mid portion of the right uh, jugular vein. Also, the dialysis catheter with a very narrow uh, distal jugular vein uh, noted by the white circle. Magnified view. You can see how the uh, distal jugular vein was the size of the dialysis catheter. Just distal to destruction is the entrance of the right subclavian vein, right in this area. As you can see now, some die into the subclavian vein. Because the patient had a left cephalic vein, a left subclavian venogram was done. You can see the uh, left subclavian vein and then the left innominate vein uh, more proximal. See the external wires in yellow. You can see that venogram in light blue of the left subclavian and more proximally the left innominate vein. You can note how the innominate vein uh, ends distal to the obstruction. And I will see two fluoroscopic images side by side, done initially showing the right jugular vein with the dilation and then the one done through the left uh, subclavian. And now the images combine. You can see the dilated right internal jugular vein the error of narrowing, the error where the subclavian vein enters on the right side, the right innominate vein, the left innominate vein as they join with the right to become the superior vena cava. On surface ultrasound of the left internal jugular vein, it was noted a good diameter and a left central line was placed through the left internal jugular vein. Post-operative chest x-ray is shown to complement the case study. You can see the external defibrillating pads in white, the left one placed more posteriorly. The external wires in yellow, top one appear to be fractured in the plain image. The left internal jugular vein introducer and swan gans catheter placed through it in the main pulmonary artery. A bioprosthetic in the mitral valve position. The orogastric uh, tube and the plain image just uh, as a refresher at the end. I hope you have enjoyed the case and the video. Thank you for watching.